Hello, in this video I'm gonna show you the ultimate money making strategy. I will tell you how I took the storage full of materials, processed them down for billions of profit and took that money to fund my tier 10 horse. I'm kidding, my horse is back there, it's a tier 8. But yeah, the plan for this video is to take you through this storage full of materials. These are all materials my workers have brought in and I want to go through them and tell you how I would go about turning these into money. Because I know many of you are going to be in a situation where you have all of these stacks of materials in your storage and you are just not quite sure what to do with them. But before we get started with that, let's take a quick look at what you would need to start processing all of these materials down. So first off, you would want to be at least master one processing. That's the breakpoint where you start to get the maximum yield on all processing. And that has the highest requirements of all of these materials. So at master one, you're gonna be good for all of those. What that means in practice is when you're processing, you will get multiple items per craft. So for example, if I'm taking these melted iron shards into iron ingots, I will get one to four ingots per craft. If I didn't have the appropriate level, I would get only say one to three or one to two per craft. And as you can imagine, not getting the maximum yield is pretty devastating if you're processing for profit. So master one is the minimum level you would want to be. Obviously having higher level helps because it increases our mastery. And mastery is pretty important because it will determine how many batches we can process at once through mass processing. You can see here I'm in the 1800 bracket and I can do 222 items at once. So it's nice to have some processing gear to increase our mastery. You want to get a pair of processing clothes, I'm running Ted Carter. Processing stone, I'm doing a Ted Mana stone, as well as your accessories. And if you have a bit of money to invest, you can also get the lightstone set. The clank clank set is gonna be pretty nice because it gives success rate, mastery and EXP, as well as a bit of weight. And then I'm also running a standard weight setup. In terms of alchemy stones, I'm running the trans tier because I'm on the way to Guru 50, so every bit of EXP counts. Now I could get some more mastery, for example by upgrading my clothes or through crystals, but mastery isn't gonna be all that important for me, because as you can see here, I'm processing timber, and timber is extremely heavy. I can only go for about 15 minutes until I run out of weight. So if I'm AFK for let's say 30 minutes, then I'm gonna run out of weight pretty much regardless of how much mastery I have. So I could have like 1500, 1800, 2k, it doesn't even matter, my character is gonna stand there idling when I come back to my PC. So just keep in mind that having higher mastery will of course be beneficial for getting through these materials faster. But that is only to a certain point, and that point is gonna be determined by what you're processing, how much weight you have. Pretty much if you often see yourself coming back to your PC and your character is idling at full weight, then getting more mastery isn't gonna do anything. Oh, and then the last bit, uh, I'm also running the Pearl Shop costume. That's gonna massively increase my AFK time, especially on the heavier recipes like Timbers and Ores. But it's a Pearl Shop item, so everyone can decide for themselves if they want to get it. And then the third bit of setup I recommend you guys to do is pooling all your processing materials into one storage. That's a massive quality of life update once you start processing all of them down. The easiest way to transfer all of these materials is of course the Magna storage, but even if you don't have that you can just make use of regular old horse overstacking and the character transport. But yeah, let's just get started with all of these materials here. We're gonna be starting out with the grains because they're nice and simple. So to figure out what to do with these materials, you've got a few options. You could either use the crafting nodes. You can see here if we type in corn, uh, it says that it goes into a bunch of stuff. But I like using videolytics a lot more and we're gonna be using the site a lot throughout this video. So let's take the moment it takes to set this up. Do you wanna go into the top right, enter your region, and then head into the settings, set the text related values as well as your weight. And then here set your processing mastery and success rate. This number is a decimal, so 1 means 100%. Normally you would have to calculate that yourself, but I'm lazy and I always enter 1, because that's what I have if I run the standard processing buffs over so draft, seafood corn meal and the clunk clunk set. Alright, and with that we can move on to the big processing table that's gonna be under life skill processing. And here we got a bunch of recipes as well as some additional info. But we came here to figure out what to do with our grains. 
So I'm gonna take corn as an example and just so you know it works the same with all of the other grains. So if you type in corn into the search bar, you can see it brings up all of the recipes that corn goes into. That's gonna be the flour as a direct usage as well as the corn dough as an indirect usage because corn dough takes corn flour as an ingredient. And then that ultimately goes into a bunch of cooking stuff. So you can already see that this is a really powerful tool for figuring out what to do with any given processing material. But if you're somewhat new to life skilling, then this is still a pretty long list and kind of a lot to take in at once. So let's try to get this down even more. So I do one step of pea processing, that's sorting by the daily volume. The daily volume shows how many of these items sell per day on the market. So you can see here that the flour and dough are highly in demand. That's gonna be the big markets and all of these items are gonna be more like a niche markets. Focusing on the big markets is a good starting point because that's where you're gonna find the stable demand and stable profits. Speaking of profit, we get 49 mil on the flour and then 50 mil on the corn into flour into dough. And 50 mil an hour looks good on paper, but just keep in mind that profits never exist in a vacuum. So, for example, instead of processing this, I could easily be AFK cooking a recipe like vinegar and make as much, if not more money than that. So for me personally, this is like a mediocre profit. So profit is gonna be the first thing I look out for. The second thing is gonna be XP. That's especially important for me because as I said, I'm leveling to Guru 50. And you can see here by the bright red color, that's just horrible XP. And of course, everybody values XP differently. But I will say I'm gonna have a hard time justifying this just by the XP and the profit alone. But there's also going to be a third point I'm looking out for that is convenience. So that includes, for example, how long I can be AFK for when processing this and grains are extremely light. So I can be AFK for about an hour to an hour 30 on those. That's pretty convenient. And the second thing is you can already see the flour and dough is going to be used in cooking. And when I'm cooking, I always need flour and dough. And being self-sufficient on those, not having to buy off the market would of course be nice. So taking that all together, are we going to process our grains into flour or dough? And obviously everyone has to decide that for themselves, but just to give you some idea, I will not bother processing them because I don't think the bit of convenience justifies the mediocre profit and the low EXP. So these three points make up the system that I'm going to be using all throughout the video to figure out what I want to do with my materials. Alright, next up we got the fabrics, so that's fleece, flax and cotton, and also silk if you had the note running in Valencia. So let's start with the flax. If we type that in, you can see that it goes into flax thread, fabric, and then enhanced fabric. And we can already see that the enhanced fabric is gonna be more of a niche market and the real demand is in the fabric. But surprisingly, even more demand is in the thread. And when I looked at this, it seemed a bit weird to me. And in these cases, it's always a good idea to take a look at the market. So you can see here that the flax is extremely flooded and we're never gonna be able to sell that if we process it. So kind of our two options here is to sell at thread, which means we're going to be losing out on the EXP of the fabric. As you probably know, fabrics are massive EXP, that's why they're used to power level. So then the other option is going to be the costume mill. You can use the fabrics to make life skill clothes and a costume mill. You can locate that through the filters in the top right in a city view here. And there you can see it goes into, for example, Fisher's clothes. So this is a fairly slow but somewhat profitable way to get rid of the flex fabric. The one thing I recommend if you run a costume mill like this is getting your hands on a plus three worker. So that's a worker with the plus three life clothes skill. Every time this worker makes a pair of life clothes, he will take four times the materials and produce four clothes. Otherwise your clothes production is gonna be pretty slow. But yeah, making these life clothes is not the highest profit, but it's like a steady stream of income. So it's definitely something you can consider. Now for the other fabrics, it's a bit easier. You can see here that the uh, fleece goes into wool and that has decent volume and also pretty good profit. And then for cotton, it's pretty much the same story. So taking this all together on the fabrics, we got like a mid-ish profit, pretty good experience. The fabrics are also pretty light. They're just as light as the grains. So I'm probably just gonna process them all down for the EXP and then try to find some way to get rid of them. I'm way too lazy to start off a costume mill, so I'm probably just gonna store the flax fabric in storage and wait until someday they make it more useful. 
Alright, and with that we can move on to the timbers. So you can see here I've already started processing down my timbers. You chop them into planks and then into plywood. Plywood is used to make trade crates, so for example this maple plywood here goes into this reindeer timber crate. Now the thing is, not all of these plywoods go into trade crates, so for example the elder tree plywood doesn't have a trade crate. But you can see here it's about as expensive as the maple plywood. So who the hell buys those? The answer is gonna be people who go for these high-end alchemy stones. You can see here they are completely sold out on the market. So you have to grow them yourself and to grow an alchemy stone you need to feed it materials. So these protection stones take plywood as feeding materials. So every time someone goes for one of these things they're gonna scoop up hundreds of thousands of plywoods off the market. And that means pretty much any plywood is gonna have some demand on the market between traders buying them or people polishing alchemy stones. So that's good news for us. You can pretty much take any timber you have in storage, chop it into planks, into plywood, and if you want to sell them to the market, someone will buy it. Now, obviously one question I'm asking myself is, is it actually gonna be worth to process this into plywood? You can see here the profit is decent in most of these, but definitely not all of them. And for this I actually want to go in a bit more detail here. So if we click on the item, we will go into the detailed recipe view. What that's gonna show us is that to make fur plywood, we're gonna need to start with timber and then chop that into planks and that into plywood. And if we did that for an hour and sold the plywood to the market, we would get this much profit. So that's the same number that's being displayed on the overview table here. But you also get a bit of additional information in this detailed view. So for example, you can start tweaking the recipe. Right now, Videolytics assumes that we use fur timber that we bought on the market, but that's not actually true. I use timber that my workers have brought in. So I can indicate that to Videolytics by pressing this tax button right here. That essentially means uh, we get to save on the market tax that we would have to pay if we were to sell the timber on the market. That's gonna make the timber slightly cheaper and that increases the profit. So you want to press this tax button if you use materials that your workers have brought in. And as you can see it has a pretty big effect on the profit. And that's because we're operating on a margin here and even the 15% tax saving on this timber is gonna have a pretty significant effect on the profit. And then there's another thing you want to check. Sometimes for these timbers it can actually be more profitable to stop at the plank. And you can see here for timber it's gonna be way more profitable to sell the planks than to take them into plywood. So definitely always check that as well. So that covers the profit. Uh, let's take a look at the other two points. First of all, the EXP. The EXP doesn't look that good at first, but you have to keep in mind that if you're processing planks, you will get the 200 EXP for the planks. And then also every time you park the plywood directly, you also get 500 EXP on top of that. And there's a weird interaction in processing where if you're using mass processing to process planks or anything that has a direct tier 3 proc, so that also applies to ores, for example, you will get both the 200 and the 500 EXP. So you get 700 EXP per craft and that makes timber processing some of the highest EXP in the whole game. And then in terms of convenience, so if we look in game, you can see that timbers are extremely heavy. I can do maybe like 15 minutes of AFK time on this. So this is like comparable to cooking AFK time, so it's pretty active actually. Taking all of this together on the timbers, we got some decent profits, we got good EXP, but it's rather inconvenient because we get low AFK times. But for me personally, these 15 minutes of AFK times are still acceptable, so I'm gonna be processing down all my timbers into plywoods. Now, from here, of course, the big question is, do we take these plywoods and turn them into trade crates? And I'm gonna be honest with you, that is a huge topic and way too much for this video. So I just want to give you my quick thoughts on how good crate trading is right now. And first of all, one thing you have to know is that they removed the desert trade buff and they baked that into the price of the crates. What that means is you don't have to trade into Valencia anymore you can actually pick any pair of cities that are far apart. And the current meta is to make the crates in Valencia city them hold them all the way over the ocean into the land of morning light to Moodle Village. 
But that also means that everybody who used to be set up for crates like me now has to set up completely new in Valencia City. And the biggest hurdle is gonna be getting the plus three workers. So that's workers who can make four crates at once. You can see I got the plus three skill for fish crate, which is kind of useless. And I would want to get that for both timber and ore. And that's not something I can do in an afternoon. Getting those skills usually takes like weeks or even months of leveling workers and re-rolling their skills. So this is one of the bigger barriers to entry for trading. And then if you go through the hassle of making all of these crates, you're only gonna be making about 15 to 30% more money than if you had sold the crate materials to the market. So the bottom line here is that crate trading can be a bit of low effort money on top of your processing, but it's never going to be any monumental profit. And if you want to get into crate trading, I really recommend you read into this. A good starting point for that is, for example, the trading channel and the live skill discord. And one specific resource I want to point out is GPW's profit calculator. This is extremely useful if you're trying to calculate crate profits. Oh, and I realized while editing the video that most of the things I show require you to have a value pack to get any significant profit. Trading is a thing you can do without a value pack. It's basically tax evasion. All right, and with that, we can move on to the ores. So ores are not gonna be that much different from timbers. For example, you can heat copper and tin into bronze ingots that goes into a trade crate. Then just like the timbers, not all of these ores actually go into trade crates. So for example, if you process copper alone, then you will get copper ingots and that doesn't have a trade crate, but it's still in demand on the market. Again, because of people polishing alchemy stones. So the ingots are gonna get bought up by people polishing destruction stones. And you can see here that just like the timbers, pretty much all of the ingots are gonna have some demand. That's the common ones at least. And there are also a few fancy ores. So for example, titanium, vanadium, and platinum. These are way too expensive to go into trade crates or alchemy stones. And you can see here, they're mainly used to make these pure crystals. So to make a pure crystal like this, you're gonna need to supply metal solvent. This is an alchemy product for which you need trace of savagery and rough stone. Getting these can be a bit difficult at times, but as you can see, making these pure crystals can be pretty good profit. You just want to have an eye on the sale volume to see how many of these you can actually sell. So base option is gonna be ingots, and then if you feel like making some more money, you can also spec into these pure crystals. All right, next up we got the gemstones. That's stuff like these rough crystals as well as the rubies and opals. These rough crystals are honestly not that big of a deal. You can process them once into these crystals and then try to slowly sell them over time. And then pretty much the same goes for these rubies, with the exception that processing rubies is extremely high EXP. So just for the sake of EXP, you could process them down and then try to slowly sell them over time. Now, the one thing I would 100% recommend you process are these rough opals. Opals go into polished, into brilliant, and then into moonlight opals. And these are used in the old moon sensor for horse awakening. And as you can see, they're pretty expensive on the market. And processing these opals is extremely high profit. Just keep in mind that you're also going to need to provide the metal solvent. Yeah, and then we only have one stack of materials left, the bag of muddy water here. And those are really not too exciting. You see, you got low profit, low experience. I'm just going to chuck them all on the market. If you're into alchemy, you can consider processing this just for convenience. But keep in mind that there's also a vendor who sells purified water for 5k. He's located in Sun Grain Bazaar. And that's gonna be it for this video. I hope I could give you some insights into what to do with all of these processing materials and whether it's worth processing them and how you would actually go about evaluating that. You can see here, I'm definitely not gonna process all of them down and that's gonna really depend on my specific expectations for profit, experience and also convenience. And at the end of the day, everybody should make their own decisions about what they wanna do with their materials. But yeah, in any case, I'll see you around. Take care.